Hey everybody, today we're going to connect this LCD touchscreen to an ESP32. It's a 320 by 240 SPI 2.8 inch touchscreen. It's one that you see a lot of when you see these LCD touchscreens. A lot of people have problems connecting them to an ESP32. We're going to see how easy it is. These have the ILI 9341 driver. And you can pick these up on Amazon for around $22. And while they all seem to have a built-in SD card slot, there's nothing actually special about the SD card slot. I'm going to be talking about that in a separate video. We're not going to be doing anything with that this video. Furthermore, this project will directly interface with Platform I.O. At the time of this video, Core 6.1.4, Home is 3.4.3. If you're looking for this video, except running under Arduino IDE instead of Platform I.O., click the link in the top right corner. We'll take you to it. The LCD display, as well as the backlit screen, pulls uh, a bit of current, and I don't want to run it through the ESP32 voltage regulator, so I have the separate power supply, which will supply the 5 volts and the 3.3 volts that I'm going to be using for this project, so I will show you how I'm doing that. This HW131 is one of the more common cheap ESP32 power supplies. So in the main screen of Platform I.O., we're just going to start with a new project for this, and we're going to choose what project name we're going to have. So I'm, I'm not going to be overly creative. We're just going to call this the touchscreen test. And then we'll select the type of board that we're using. Type ESP into the filter. And then scroll down to the board that I'm using. Maybe different from your board. Mine is the Do It ESP32 Dev Kit V1. Our framework is going to be Arduino. So I hit finish. And in a couple of seconds, we're ready to go. I'm going to click that bottom file, the platform io.ini, and most people familiar with this file will find it very easy to add the library to it. But regardless, we do want to set our monitor speed, which we're going to set for 9600, only because that's a speed that's already in the program. So it's just easier that way. I would generally set it higher at around 115. But we'll do this the conventional way. I'm going to click back on platform io home, and then I'm going to click on libraries. Over to the search window, I type in TFT underscore ESPI, and then hit the search button. I scroll down until I find TFT underscore ESPI, and then I select it. And the TFT ESP library is open right here, current version 2476 from 21 days ago. Click on installation, and we could see how we would put it in to our platform IO, INI. But we're just going to select a project, select our touchscreen test and just hit add, take care of it for us. Speed this up by a factor of four. And congrats, it's completed. Hit that little X and we're ready to go. I'll show you a common pitfall though, since platform io.ini was already open while we did this, you'll see that the changes did not appear here. And if I attempt to close or save that file, which I will now attempt to save the file, we'll get an error because there'll be a newer version than the one that's currently there. And we can see that the error is, is that one of them has the monitor speed and the other one has the live depths added. And this is not really a major problem. Obviously, I could take that line 15 on the left side and copy it. And I could put it in line 16 on the other side, resolving the conflict. So I close it and then I add line 16 here and then I could save this. And then when it asks me to overwrite, I could simply overwrite it and the problem is resolved. As a new project, if we go over to the source folder, we'll see main.cpp, and it looks very much like an Arduino-style program. These obviously include the Arduino.h in Platform I.O., but everything else looks the same. Continuing, we make our way to PIO, and then Live Depths, and we see TFT underscore ESPI. We open that. Scrolling down to user setup select.h, we select that file for editing. Our first order of business will make our way down to line 42, where we will disable user setup.h. So we'll put two forward slashes right there. Then we'll scroll all the way down to line 91, which happens to be setup 42. We can see right here for ILI 9341, 320 by 240, and uncomment that. At this point, I like to hit save. We'll scroll down now to the user setup directory and open that and make our way down to setup number 42 and open that file for editing. In this file, we'll just be going to line number 14 
which we'll be uncommenting to enable touch support. So we'll do that now. And then we'll save this file. And that is it for all the configuration editing that's required to get this thing going. We can now close all these tabs that we've opened up on our screen. From here, we'll move right into the physical wiring. We'll call this out point to point, starting with the ESP32 and the LCD display. VCC will go to five volts. Ground will go to ground. CS will go to D15. RST will go to D4. DC will go to D2. MOSI will go to D23. SCK will go to D18. The LED will go to 3 volts. MISO will go to D19. TCLK will go to D18. TCS will go to D5. TDIN will go to D23. And finally, TDO will go to D19. The last one is not connected. I wired everything as previously described, as we could see here, the five volt power coming off the power supply through this rail, through these blue and white wires, feeding voltage in as well as this yellow wire to the module. It was plugged in here on the last video, 3.3 volts. And my other 3.3 volts is plugged in over here to the 3.3 volt part of the power supply. Now this is very strange because the jumper wasn't modified to support this in the last video and still worked, which means I had 3.3 volts coming into the 3.3 volt voltage regulator on this board. But I guess whatever, it worked. And unlike the Arduino version of this video, we're running it through the power supply and not through the voltage regulator of the ESP32, which is what I intended to do. On the left side, I'm going to open up examples and scroll down to 320 by 240. And then what I want to do is scroll down. We're going to start with an easy one, and that's TFT Starfield. I open that, and we see this program. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit copy. Then I'm going to make my way down to the source folder. And I realize it's just off screen, but what I'm doing is I'm pasting that file into the source folder. Now I'm going to rename main.cpp to main.bak and then rename this test program to main.cpp then I will add and include for arduino.h make my way down to verify and hit it for the first build I'll speed this up by a factor of four and everything here on the build looks good so we're going to push to the device this portion again I'll also speed up and once the device reboots, I switch over to serial monitor so we could take a look at the frames per second, which is available as part of the program. And we see we're looking at 40 something frames per second. And we see the screen coming up with our Starfield program. And it looks really cool. I always like this example just because it looks really cool. We get a close up of this. Take a look at that. That's pretty awesome. But this just confirms that our test works. So it's time to move on to our next example. So now I'm going to delete main CPP, our first example, move to trash, and I'm going to scroll up through our examples again until I find the keypad 24320 example, and I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to scroll back down to our source folder, and I'm going to paste it in here. And then I'm going to rename this main CPP. Again, adding to this an include for Arduino.h. Now I'm going to hit verify, and I know it's not going to work, even though it works in Arduino, but we're going to talk about why. We see right here that we get was not declared in scope errors, and there's a lot of them. And we'll go through right quick, and we'll see how easy it is to correct. Here it says line 89, and this function is indeed called on line 89 won't be declared till 205 so we could see the problem here this somehow works in arduino but yeah it's not going to work here so what we're going to do is we're going to declare it up top void and watch me spell touch calibrate wrong obviously i'm going to catch this later but it's not going to work and that's fine we understand the spirit of what i'm trying to do and i'm going to move on to the other one draw a keypad and we're just going to put that one right under it void draw a keypad i'm actually making an attempt to spell this one correctly so now what we're going to do, 
I'm going to hit verify again. We'll see how it changes. And we see a third function not declared. It's called status. I'm going to show you a gotcha here because I'm going to add status up top, line 26, and it's not going to work. We'll talk about why. Now we're getting a too many arguments function for void status. And the problem is evident. Status takes an argument and we've declared it without an argument. It's a constant character. Doing one more shortfall, I'll add constant character and try it without the star at the end so we could see the error. And we could see an invalid conversion from const car star to car. So I'm going to add that star now. Finally realizing I incorrectly declared the touch calibrate function name, I go ahead and make the last of the changes. And then hit verify one last time. And everything compiled error free. Before pushing to the device, I want to change the value on line 34 from false to true. That allows for the repeating of the calibration every time the device is rebooted. So now we're pushing to the device. Speed this up by a factor of four. And it was a success. As it turns on, we're greeted with a calibration screen. And I'm going to pick up the device. I have to be careful not to touch anything. I'm going to use the white pen that was supplied to do this. And if I mess up the calibration, I have to reboot everything and start all over. This is one of the reasons why we set this parameter to true. So that we can redo this every time we reboot. But I happen to get it right. And it booted into what looks like a phone keypad. And the numbers are all responsive, as we can see. The resolution is good enough for me to use my finger to be able to type in. And that's working absolutely fine. The commands are working in the program, as we see as well. But I will also try to type in some numbers here and then hit send to the serial port. And we can see that worked. So I can hit a couple more times there again, again, again. So that functionality also worked too. So we got the screen working as well as the touch features. Absolutely no problem. We saw some anomalies setting up power through the voltage regulator. It was very interesting. But that concludes this video. I hope you found this video enjoyable, entertaining, and informative. Do me a favor, hit that like button down below. Helps me out a lot when you do. And hit that subscribe button for more videos like this when they come out. When another video like this comes out, a link will be posted in the top right corner. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?